Welcome back to the Butterfly Lessons. In case you're just joining us now, this is um, part five of a video mini-series I've been doing after becoming really inspired by um, the process of raising caterpillars into butterflies. It started out as a, a project I was doing for my um, child's fourth birthday, but it's really turned into something that's um, inspired me on a lot of levels. and. I get so much um, of truth and answers and insights from nature, I thought I would jump on some videos and share what I'm learning with you. So where we left off is um, the chrysalides were all hatching into butterflies and, um, and today we had butterfly number seven emerging from his chrysalis. Now he was one of the ones that had um, his chrysalis knocked onto the ground of the habitat and um, so far the others have been emerging fine, but this one, um, butterfly number seven, has had some problems. As you can see, um, he emerged um, on his back and he can't upright himself. Now, that red stuff you see, that's not blood. It's called merconium. It's just a byproduct of um, the leftover goo inside his chrysalis from when he transformed from a caterpillar. But um, he's not able to upright himself, so I went on a butterfly rescue mission. Now, um, we did manage to get this butterfly uprighted. You know, he needed some assistance. He couldn't do it himself. And then, you know, I wanted to see if he was going to be okay. I took a closer look. And um, what happened was when he emerged from his chrysalis, um, he came out with a bit of a, a bent wing. Okay, one of his wings is kind of bent up. And other than that, he seems to be doing just fine. Now, um, the metaphor here for me was this. You know, there's always things um, in life that we experience that we have to overcome. You know, the last video I did was on setbacks, and I shared probably my biggest um, biggest setback story ever. And um, and we all have these things. There's all tremendous obstacles that we overcome. You know, I, I remember talking to one of my clients years ago, and I'll always remember, um, you know, she was talking about the idea of success and how there's this myth that uh, we all start on an equal playing field, and it's simply not true. I mean, not only are we all born into different socioeconomic circumstances, but, you know, quite a lot of people come through um, a history of child abuse. That was the case with my client, and she had to work to really overcome um, tremendous things within her emotional development um, because of what she went through. And, you know, as she put it, I started at less than zero. Right? Can some of you relate to that? You know, you feel like you started at less than zero. So your your climb up to success, you know, on that ladder, it starts down here. And I think a, a lot of us go through those type of things. Or, you know, we might be farther up the ladder and you experience a setback. Or, you know, maybe this happens a few times. I think that's how life is. The most important thing you need to be able to do in life is to overcome. You need to be able to overcome setbacks because those are natural and normal parts of things. And the process of overcoming though is really where you develop your core strengths, okay? You have a certain amount of gifts and talents I think you're just born with despite your circumstances, all right? And those will carry you very far. Um, but where you really get the real muscles is from, you know, difficulties sometimes. That's how you learn to get those strengths. And each time you overcome something, you become stronger. Now, an interesting thing I've observed um, over the many years of coaching holistic practitioners is that I would say about 80% of my clients have overcome some kind of a personal challenge, usually a health challenge, which is what prompted them to want to become a practitioner in the first place. Um, you know, a story is, is very typical that they face some kind of a health challenge, they're not getting the answers or the treatment that they need, they're having to find their own answers, do their own treatments, um, you know, and overcome some kind of a difficulty that way. And in that process, they have to get, you know, strong enough for themselves, but there is a point where they realize they have something worth sharing with other people, and that is the birth of a healer, right there. It doesn't matter what you coach on, I don't care if it's health or beauty, but they're, you know, or your life coach, or spiritual coach, right? When you have um, strengths built from overcoming, you have gifts worth sharing. Now, um, something interesting though I've observed there too is that oftentimes, um, despite that being the background, 
Um, when you're just starting out your practice, you know, you may not be ready to share your before story yet, okay? Maybe, you know, you're just not ready. Maybe you're, you're still finishing it up. Maybe you don't feel strong yet. Um, but here's the risk of, of not sharing your transformation story is that sometimes when you're out there marketing, you know, your website and um, even in person, you know, you can come across as being someone who's always been perfect, right? People will see you as that beautiful butterfly and they will not know that you were once a wiggly squiggly caterpillar. And, um, you know, butterflies are beautiful and inspiring, but it's really that transformation story, right? That, that transformation story, which makes us awestruck. And, um, you know, I think that there's a time when you really should share your full story with people. I think you have a much greater impact. Like, for example, I remember one of my um, one of my clients a long time ago. She was a fitness trainer, and she started out, you know, being um, considerably overweight. And she um, got determined to change her life, and determined she was, and she completely changed her whole body, and then pursued getting um, her certification in, in fitness training and started her practice. The thing about her though is, you know, she's beautiful and she was a hard body and kind of intimidating, okay? And the thing was, she didn't want to work with other hard bodies. There's, there's lots of fitness trainers out there that like that niche. They like to work with the hard bodies already too. She didn't want that. She wanted to work with the people that, you know, were her befores, right? She wanted to work with the fat fuzzy caterpillars that, that wanted to transform. And yet, she was kind of scaring them off in some ways too. So we really worked to craft her niche so that it was crystal clear that she was there to work with people who had, I think it was, you know, at least 20 pounds to lose. She showed pictures of people that were overweight, not just pictures of, you know, after stories for stock photos, but, you know, real people showing real um, weight loss. And she started to bring her story into it more, you know, show herself there um, standing with the, fat pants that she used to wear there's easily two of her could have fit in there but you know by the time she was done maybe even more and it was when she began to share that that people could relate to her okay and it all took off i remember she she hit um ninety six thousand dollars or so in just a matter of months after we changed her niche and changed her marketing materials so that it was crystal clear that she wanted to work with the people that were overweight and that she could relate to them and they could trust her and she would be safe for them emotionally to guide them through that transformation process. So I encourage you to look at taking that more into your business too. Share more of your before story. You know, if you haven't felt ready in the past, maybe it's time for you to do that now. Um, I invite you to meet with me and I'll talk with you about that. If you would like to consider is it time for you to re-niche your practice, maybe bring some more of your transformation story in it, maybe kind of tweak what it is that you're doing. Um, schedule with me a complimentary 30-minute strategy session. Okay, I offer that on my website at jayasavannah.com forward slash strategy hyphen session. Fill out an application. I'll get back to you. We'll schedule some time to talk and let's share your transformation story with the world. Okay, I've got some more videos coming. I will see you soon.